Hey guys, so I just recently finished my first uh, Champions Arena here in Mythic Heroes and so I wanted to do like a brief walkthrough of my experience playing so far. Uh, things I've learned, things I really regret and then I want to share a lot of interesting data on a tier list. Uh, I realize this video is going to be a bit rambling and a bit niche because uh, it's for like hardcore players but if you do love this game you know you want to learn more and uh, you know you want to do better I think uh, this is a very worthwhile video to watch. I actually wish uh, I had stuff like this to you know learn from uh, before I started. So basically right now uh, this this VIP guide here by Spirit Hawk, uh, shout out to Spirit Hawk. Uh, Spirit Hawk is one of the most like friendly and helpful people in the community but uh, he wrote a guide that kind of tells you how much you need to spend to get to VIP 12 and I, I've spent roughly uh, like 14 uh, 1500 in this game and um, and I just had my first uh, champions arena here and um, it wasn't a, a great experience so I've spent uh, uh, 1400 and I've been enjoying the game a lot I actually think this game is like very well designed uh, very fun it's very fun like putting teams together and I'm actually uh, doing very well on, on the total medal count so basically when I started this game uh, you know, I I didn't intend to spend like 14, you know, I wanted to spend like 300, 500 and just kind of enjoy the game. I just pulled for Oda, uh, Nobunaga and then just kind of, you know, went from there. And then the systems kind of like sucked me in uh, one by one and here I am. Uh, but but I think the, the metal system is very interesting and it keeps me kind of motivated to play. And I think... Um, you know being on a newer server my metal count is a uh, very like very good and I've been putting up a lot of uh, pace on my server other than this whale who's a VIP 16 so like 16 grand on this game uh, which I'm not you know quite willing to spend um, but you know I've been doing great progress uh, I'm actually ahead of medals as well versus you know everyone else on the server by far so for a long time I felt really good um, you know, 16k is is a lot of money for me. Whereas, you know, like 1.4, 2k is something you know I can budget. Um, but recently, in my most recent uh, vo void invader metal round, and then in this champions arena, I have noticed that my power level is you know much lower than these ultra VIPs. Before, in the more primitive days, it was you know more possible for me to keep up. But now it, it's kind of not and so I'm kind of at a decision point in this game and I've already made my decision I'll share through it but this is my first champions arena and um, the five players who advanced here are the five players that I lost to so I went four and five here and um, if you look at our total hero powers so mine was around eight million at the time and they're all pushing you know 16 million plus I'm not gonna click every one of them but they're all pushing double my total team power so it was basically impossible for me to win and once I played against them I, I realized uh, because you know if you're VIP 12 obviously you're spending a lot like 1400 is a you know, shitload of money uh, for most people watching this video I mean I'm sure like you know two-thirds of you think I'm an idiot um, so when you do spend that much like you get a bunch of resources and obviously I couldn't tell the future you know I was like trying to play the game as best as I could but I didn't know everything I know now and so there were you know different ways that I can optimize and for some time actually too um, I feel like to win champions arena and put up a good fight I'm gonna need to spend at least VIP 14 maybe even VIP 15 um, so you know around like five to eight grand here and I actually almost considered uh, redoing my account and one of the main reasons for that is um, because I'm on server 132 I'm way behind in progress of people who are you know I think the lowest server in my group is 120 uh, which is like pretty ridiculous um, I actually felt like I got scammed in this experience and so you know I was clicking some of these players um, who are ahead of me and you know if you look at a player like this for example uh, shout out to him by the way impressive everything but this player is in my group and has played you know 
seven seasons, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, seven plus seasons of, of Champions Arena before me. So that means, you know, this player has played at least like 60 days more than me, like 70 days. And I've been grouped up, you know, with players like this. Um, and we just have no chance. I, I also uh, felt pretty scammed. So I, I went through and I added up how many players in this group out of 64 players, how many of them were in server 130 and above? Four out of 64. So we just got crushed this round uh, because we didn't have a chance to catch up. And so I almost considered re-rolling my account, just punting this 1300, you know, either giving it away or selling it and then starting over um, because, you know, I'm pretty like obsessed with min-maxing. And so I almost considered even starting over, but I decided not to because I like uh, certain heroes that I have so much like Oda will be very hard to get again I have a lot of copies of Amaretsu as well and she'll be very Amaterasu and she'll be very difficult to get you know copies of but mostly Oda will be you know pretty difficult to get um, so many copies of so I decided to stick with my count also I plan on spending 5k or 8k you know max ish um, over the next two years and so you know 1400 is already like one fifth of that um, so it'll be kind of wasteful um, so I decided to stick with this count. I decided to, uh, so I've I kind of identified the, the things that I did wrong with, with hindsight. And I'm going to talk about them now. And then I'm going to redouble my efforts. So we're going to pretend this Champions Arena never happened. So, you know, if you look at um, the next time I get a medal, it's not even going to show that one, right? Because I didn't have any results. So shh, this is our secret. Please don't tell anyone. But we're just going to pretend that one never happened. That was just a warm-up. And so the next Champions Arena in like 10 days, I'm going to try and um, spend, maybe even get to VIP 13. By the way, this is money I can afford to lose. You know, definitely don't, um, you know, give give any company money if you can't afford to play with it. Um, this isn't like, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy. This is uh, comfortable for me. So... I might get to that level, but I'm not really targeting a level. I'm just going to buy the best offers that I can and, and structure my account uh, in a better way. So uh, real quick, some of the things before we get to the tier list, real quick, uh, some of the things that I regret about what I did uh, with my account, I think I spent, um, so you know, at the start, it's just kind of like I was just kind of going by feel and I ended up buying a lot of offers that weren't very good value. You only want to buy you know, 1800 plus offers, but I just wanted like copies of Oda. I didn't realize that, you know, you needed two and three copies later. Um, I didn't realize, you know, you shouldn't really focus on power building URs, but I spent, um, you know, a good amount of Novas on just trying to pull copies of him, which I think is really bad. Um, I also spent uh, a lot of Novas on uh, two events, the Winter Wonderland and the Gacha Pod event. To like chase cosmetics I have like a weakness I don't even know why I'm doing this um, but I just like have to collect everything so I was just wasting a lot of resources on you know skins and stuff for heroes that I never use um, but now I realize you know medals are the best skins of all so hopefully I can stop doing that um, this game is like really weird because Champions Arena is for sure the most competitive mode but they've made Champions Arena I think this is a really weird decision, but they've made Champions Arena rules scale up um, to level 350, meaning that whales don't get an advantage from their, you know, stardust and gold and all that spending. So it's scaled up in levels, but then everything else isn't scaled up, except they remove antiques during the knockout stages as well. So it's very weird because, you know, if you want to win like medals in uh, Void Invader, and Valhalla the other game modes you do need levels and Valhalla was super frustrating for me too because just like with Champions Arena I was paired up against players who had like 50 60 days of progress on me so you know I did some tilt spending just to get into the top 10 um, but it you know it it's it was kind of frustrating but you need so you need all these resources to build your museum and your character levels up but then once you hit champions arena they're all worthless so it it's really weird and dumb and i think they kind of did it by accident because originally 
they did allow antiques. Uh, if I was them, I would just stay completely consistent and either sink way more, which isn't good because then, you know, whales wouldn't spend or desync levels too so that, you know, all of that progress matters because it should matter. And desyncing levels would make it so that uh, free to play players who are really dedicated could like eventually catch up to whales who don't, you know, play that often. So I think that that's kind of a dumb decision. It puts me in a weird spot. But uh, one thing I regret is, you know, putting a lot of re resources into museum, like buying a lot of offers, all of the uh, tribute chests here, which I got a lot of because, you know, I've spent 1400 um, I regret, you know, buying so many maps. Um, I regret buying so much, spending so many diamonds on, on dust and gold and um, experience. By the way, if you're spending, uh, experience is the not as useful one. Uh, gold and dust is, I'm always out of gold basically. Um, but I wish, you know, I hadn't spent on those so much and just really spent on only the things that help you win uh, Champions Arena. Because if you do it that way, um, then, then you're actually uh, powerful enough to get by without a strong museum and without strong levels. If you focus on, you know, ascensions, divinities, weapons, um, then, you know, you're actually strong enough to, to just brute force through it anyways. And then your spending is way more efficient because you're, you know, you're spending on uh, winning the mode, actually. And then also... Um, you know, there were some special Christmas deals. They were kind of a scam too, because they ran the 20% offer and then the 50% offer first. But I really believe uh, in games like this, like if, if you're pretty sure you're gonna spend a certain amount, you might as well get it over with. And that's because uh, every VPI, uh, not VPI, VIP uh, step along the way unlocks passive bonuses. So, you know, I had no way of knowing that I was gonna end up this high or even VIP 14 but if I had known like I missed uh, several banners where I had where I had this bonus um, so I missed you know a few copies of heroes and um, if I had known I would have just gone ham and even you know hit like VIP 14 um, during the Christmas deals and got way more Novas that way too uh, but you know that that's whatever I mean that I had no way of knowing the future I don't even know when the next deal is either um, it kind of pains me a little bit to to spend a hundred dollars on Novas each time right now um, when there were these sick deals like just a few months ago but um, I'm, a, I'm a pretty new player I've only been playing like two months so I don't know what the next you know deals will be and then finally uh, the last thing that that I regret here so I guess this would be number four is I actually did study uh, some of the weaker players by collection power who made it to the you know final 64 here because I really wanted the the medal um, for for participating and I noticed uh, some of the smarter uh, hardcore players actually did like a pretty interesting strategy let me see if I can find some of them they seem to all be grayed out um, but what they're doing here in essence like this player is a decent example of it uh, only VIP 12 but they're grouping uh, all of their powerful heroes into like the first two and then they're punting the other two slots. So um, actually, it might even show up in my log. So, you know, playing against um, much stronger players here. Um, so I realized, you know, I was trying to balance out all my resources. This is really small, but I have like plus 20, plus 15 uh, ascensions on most of my heroes, enhances on most of my heroes with weak ascensions. You know, this guy's triple rainbow purple on me pop in a trunk on me and I have you know like reds and whites and only one rainbow so you know this was kind of pathetic but but also you know I had like IW 200s and um, you know just basically mid-range spread around and I realized that um, it's just a speed bump for the strong teams so a lot of these like weaker budget players who are smarter uh, maybe they have more experience, but you see how like quickly my team gets rolled. I might as well have just put like a you know auto bot team of just no power levels there, because um, I got rolled so hard I didn't even do any damage, right? And the thing I noticed about the the very few players who were out punching their their levels is they were all uh, stacking 
only like one or two teams and then you know getting by this player might be another example too yeah so this player you can see um he's vip 13 he's on my server he's one of the only players on my server and his collection power is similar to mine but he stacked his first team with five of the best pvp heroes and then you know brought them all to rainbow whereas i kind of spread all my shit you know like too wide and then i would, my weaker teams are just way too weak uh, to bang with you know these triple rainbow lineups so what i'm gonna do going forward i picked like 10 heroes and i'm gonna only be uh, focusing on them um in in all aspects so you know real real quick like the plan is to i'm around 1400 the plan is to buy all of the you know 1700 percent 1800 percent offers along the way uh refocus on heroes maybe get to vip 13 by the time uh, the next champions arena comes out and if i can't you know go past that that area if i can't pass champions arena and like get a medal and start you know building on medals there, there's actually a chance like I, I might even just give up um because you know it is starting to get i mean i'm using disposable income but it is starting to get uh uh, expensive and I think the threshold is gonna vary for everyone here this is like a subjective personal thing but um, this game has like really good competitive systems I feel like so it's really kind of gotten me in um, like kind of hooked into everything so that's been my journey so far and those are my future plans and at this point I would be happy to because I'm so behind in time versus these you know server 118s and, and stuff until they merge me to a closer server, I think I'm pretty happy just trying to get, uh, just happy trying to get, you know, even like top 64 medals and just work on building the medals and then eventually trying to get first uh, in some other way. So yeah, that, that does it for my journey part. And then I'm just gonna do a quick uh, talk about the tier list. So. My last video before this, uh, I did make a tier list for the community, and um, and I would definitely suggest you check it out. Uh, I think it's it's actually I was happy when I made it, but then now I've I've run even more numbers on on everything, and I, I really think it it's an amazing tier list. Uh, I think it, it's really accurate. Um, this is the tier list ratings right here. But what I basically did was I took every uh, top champions arena player here um, in the leaderboard in the global ranking so you know there's like I don't know like 34 accounts that have won champions league once champions arena and um, I think their average is like VIP 16 uh, some ridiculous number uh, which is like 16k but and then I cut out the, the accounts that are AFK so if they don't have any of the new heroes uh, and they haven't been playing like this date shows the last time they won I just cut them out of the rankings and I, I've recorded results for for two sets of champions arenas now and so this uh, this is the second time and then I uh, older servers require five teams and the newer servers require four teams I'm more interested in the four team data here but I actually blended them so this overall usage number is is a mix of five team setups and four team setups so just long story short the, the the characters at the top of this list are the best uh pvp heroes in the game and then here you can see the the tiers that i gave all of them and um remember my tier list was based on you know long-term value meta strength and all that and um and i yeah i, I just think that the tier list is just super on point um, the next re revision to the tier list um, I might consider bringing uh, Percy up to a but I don't really see that many changes honestly that I would make here um, yeah but I mean I could see you know bringing a few of them up also my tier list didn't have ratings for the uh, the URs the ultra rares but I decided to just add them based on you know what I value because when you build URs you're basically building you're basically a whale if you're building UR so most likely you want to be competitive in PvP and stuff um, so I did go ahead and rank them but yeah these are the best uh, PvP heroes in the game it's kind of a tier list and it kind of lines up almost perfectly 
with the tier list I had, which I did before I got these numbers. Maybe the, you know, the Poseidon, the Athena were underrated, and then maybe the, the Percy was underrated. Um, and I might bring them up in the next wave. Uh, some of the newer heroes are going to be underrepresented, but Morgan's looking, you know, like an AS. Mirasaki's looking like a BA. Um, she's not that good in, in PvP, but remember, I picked her because she's really good in Trials. Um, she might be good in PvE. And who knows? We don't know how good she'll be in PvP. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out too is this change is the difference um, in usage from this week uh, to the previous week. And um, and it's good to see uh, my man Oda getting more popular. But I did want to point out one comp that is getting more popular. And it's especially amongst like the very top top players, the top whales like the the uh, D Gorger and and Quinn types. Uh, they're all running this Oda green comp where the core is like Oda, uh, Idun, um, maybe Freya, and then uh, like Flora is being seen in there. Um, that's kind of the core of it. And then uh, who else who else are they using? Um, one more hero I want to say. One sec. This is D Gorger, by the way. Uh, Jotaro, but he, yeah, it's like this. Oh yeah, Morgan, right? So it's it's like Oda, and then Idun, and so like Green, and then Morgan to resurrect Flora, and um, and I think one of the reasons they're doing this is because um, the top meta teams in this game are basically Archimedes carry, Marduk, and Susano carry with you know Lucifer optional, Lilith carry. And then after that, and then usually it'll be a, a green, like you need to build a green team, right? So it'll usually either be Apollo green mix or, you know, Kirin, um, you know, Freya like green mix, right? So usually, you know, people will build like those four teams. But the Lilith team, the the uh, Marduk Susano team, and the Archimedes team are, you know, basically like locked for the majority of lineup. So then when you have, you know, a five team requirement, you need two more teams that will build on top of that. And I think this is why a lot of them are running uh, this this Oda comp, but then I have a feeling this Oda comp uh, is, is pretty good because even, you know, players like Lorac, who uh, only has to run four teams. So, you know, four teams obviously is gonna be stronger than five teams. But he's still running. He's still trying this comp uh, as team one. So that that must mean, you know, it, it it's pretty good. Um, or maybe he's just yoloing. But I don't I don't think so. These these players seem to take uh, Champions Arena quite seriously. So I think if he's running it as one of his four, then he probably thinks there's some chance it's it's one of the four best comps in the game. So I find it pretty exciting because it's um well first of all I always wanted Oda to shine. He hasn't been taking off that well. But then also, um, you know, Oda and Morgan are, are newer heroes that I have access to, whereas I don't have access to, you know, Lilith and um, and Marduk and Lucifer. I actually don't have access to any of them. Um, so yeah, we'll look. We'll be looking forward to that. But um, this is basically the the meta game right here, according to the top uh, Champions Arena winners, and um, I think it, it's pretty informative and useful. And I'm pretty happy that. Uh, basically nailed the tier list here. So um, if you you know enjoyed the video, enjoyed the content, if I didn't bore you to death, I uh, really appreciate you sharing the tier list with you know other players who are looking for help because I, I really think there's a lack of you know well sourced you know try hard information on this game um, and it leaves a hole for new players and that's kind of one of the reasons why uh, it's also kind of why I'm hesitant to spend more on this game because if it was like even half or a quarter of the popularity of like Genshin or something like that, then, you know, it'd be pretty fun. But I am getting the feeling like this game is kind of, you know, it's not like the healthiest, like alivest game around. The community's kind of small. So um, I would appreciate, you know, you sharing the content with players. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.